Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Let's all stand. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise offering. You can do better than that. Come on now. This is the King of Kings we're talking about. We're talking about the Lord of Lords. Amen. <laughs> the God who heals, the God who delivers, the God who restores and redeems us. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. We're talking to an old friend today, and uh, she was just talking about how God has changed our lives. Amen. And I, I said, I remember you. I remember you. And uh, when I was in the ninth grade, and she was like probably a twelfth grader, and I remember seeing her in a, in a school bus, and she was wild, man. I said, I was innocent back then. I said, I didn't know nothing about life then. I was a little ninth grader and stuff. And I said, but I looked at you. I said, man, girl, you were wild. And she started laughing. And she goes, that's what you remember about me? I said, yeah, that's what I remember. <laughs> but uh, uh, what God has done in her life and what God has done in every one of our lives, we need to be grateful. Amen? We need to be thankful for that. And when you're grateful and thankful, when you wake up every morning and you tell the Lord, thank you. I'm grateful for what you're doing. I'm grateful for what you've done in my life. When you truly mean that in your heart, you're going to walk in the peace. You're going to walk in the confidence because God goes with you. Wherever you go, God, go, God goes before you. Amen. And if God goes before you, who can be against you? No one can be against you. So I just want to encourage you guys today in the word that let's be steadfast. Did you guys get my scriptures that I wanted to put up there, man? Can you put that up there for me real quick? Just want to encourage you guys in the scripture that God is doing something unique here. God is doing some good work right here at, at Turning Point Fellowship. Can I get an amen? amen? Hallelujah. You know, it's time to bless the Lord and honor the Lord. And here, you know, in, in Philippians 6, 1, it says, be confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you, will complete it into the day of Jesus Christ. And this is the process we talk about. It's a process. It's a work that the Lord is doing in our lives. He's building us up. He's redeemed us already. So, but we have to learn how to live in the kingdom type living, in that principle of God that he has for us. So he says, be confident of this very thing, that the work that he begun in you, that the work that the Lord has begun in you, that he's going to complete it. We don't have to be confident in ourselves. We have to be confident in the Lord, that he's going to finish that work. Can I get an amen? amen. Hallelujah. And then the 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Hello. Uh, first, uh, we got it up. Oh, wow. I'm sorry. Woo, you're ahead of me, girl. <laughs> it says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, no matter what goes on in our lives. We can't be moved by circumstances. We can't be moved by situations. We cannot be or should not be moved by dilemmas in our lives. Can I get an amen? He says always abounding. We're not to be beneath. We're to be the heads. That's what he's called us to be. So abounding in the work of the Lord. We should be thriving and not just surviving. There is a season of survival. There is a season that you will be surviving. But we got to get beyond that, especially you mature Christians. You got to know how to thrive even in a storm. You got to know over, how to overcome even in a dilemma. You got to know and trust God's word that God's word will deliver you. Amen. He says, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So whatever you do in the Lord, it's not in vain. It's not going to come back to you empty. It's going to accomplish all that God's purpose is to do for you. Amen. And God has great work for every one of us. But we have to be in the word. I know some of you guys don't get excited because you're not in the word. I'm encouraging you to get in the word. Get in the word. Amen. If you just read a verse a day, if you read a chapter a day, but be consistent and be committed to that, to doing that in your lives. And you're going to see God finish this good work in you. And then I want to go to Galatians 6, 9. Let us uh, not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we will reap if we faint not. If you don't quit, if you keep on fighting the good fight of faith, if you continue to bless God and honor God, you're never going to be weak. You're going to be growing and you're going to be abounding in the things of the Lord. No matter what falls uh, before you or goes against you, you're always going to end up winning. And I want to encourage you in that. You win, no matter what goes on, our, uh, goes on 
in our lives, we win. Amen? Where a Christian is going into, into something, or he's in something, or they're coming out of something. It, it may be a battle. It may be a, a temptation or things like that. But you got to know that through God, you can accomplish all things. And I want to encourage you in that. To come out winning. Come out swinging with the word of God. Can I get an amen? amen. So we're going to bless the Lord today. Before we open up, we're going to bless the Lord with some praise and worship. I know they're excited. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. <laughs> bless the Lord. And you got to be excited too. You're about to praise a living God. You're about to praise your God that has never let you down. He's never let you down. No matter what we've gone through. We may have gone through some sickness, some money uh, difficulties. You may have even gone through some deaths in your life. And God will bring you through it. God will see you through it. You'll learn something in that. Amen. And we learn to depend on him. Uh, that's really coming to me that God really wants us to de depend on him. Lean not to our own understandings, but with all our heart, trust in the Lord. And he directs our steps. Depend on God. Don't depend on man. Depend on God to do that work in your life and give you instruction. Amen? So I'm going to open up in prayer, and then we're going to go ahead and just bless the Lord uh, with worship and praise. And I want you guys to get your worship and praise on like never before. Get excited. Amen? If you've never done like clapping, if you never raised your hands, if you never come to the altar, I want to encourage you to come to the altar. I want you to be encouraged by clapping your hands, by raising your hands for the first time. Amen. It's something new. Do something different and you'll get a different result. So Father, we bless you and we thank you for this day. We thank you for our lives and we thank you for our salvation. We're going to lift up our voices and lift up our hearts before you and out in adoration, Father, and in praise and worship. We're grateful people, Lord. We're thankful for all that you've done. We're so grateful, Father, for the work that you've begun in it. Father, we're confident that you're going to complete it. You're going to complete it into the day of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the strength and the courage to move on and go on. Lord, we thank you for those that are on their way. We say no accidents, no, no breakdowns. Father, we'll befall them. They'll have a safe way to and from this place. I thank you for everyone that is here. I thank you that you open up their hearts and open up their minds as they open up their hearts and open up their minds and their ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to them today. I thank you for Brother Bert, Father, as he ministers the word, that he ministers it in spirit and in truth, Father, that he has studied to show himself approved unto you. A man did not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word, Father, from spirit, Father, to his soul. So I thank you and I bless you as we receive the word. We receive healing, Father. We receive forgiveness. We receive mercy, love, kindness, Lord. And we give that back. As you give it to us, Lord, we give it back to our brothers and our sisters, our families, our neighbors, our co-workers. We're Christians. And we're going to live in this, Father. We're going to live in your ways. And we're going to bless you with all that we have, Lord. So we thank you and we bless you for this service right now. In Jesus' name. And all his beautiful people said. Hallelujah. Put your hands together. Hallelujah. Come on, go sate, go sate. Come on, we got to put some feeling in that clap. We're getting ready to worship our God. Hallelujah. Jesus Messiah. Jesus Messiah, we lift your name higher. Your name is above every name. You're the Lamb who was slain and you rose from the grave. You're the King who reigns on the Jesus Messiah. Jesus Messiah, we lift your name higher. Your name is a 
Every nation, every nation, every woman, every child and every time will give you glory, will give you glory. Every nation, every woman, every child and every time will praise. Sing that again. Every nation, every nation, every woman, every child and every time will give you glory, will give you glory. Every nation, every woman. Every time and every time we'll pray. We give you praise. We give you praise. Yahweh, Yahweh, you reign. All glory to your name. Yahweh, Yahweh, you reign. We give you praise. Jesus Messiah, we lift your name higher. Your name is above every name. You're the Lamb who was slain, and you rose from the grave. You're the King now who reigns on the throne. Jesus Messiah, Jesus Messiah, we lift your name higher. Your name is above every name. You're the Lamb who was slain, and you rose from the grave. You're the king now who reigns on the throne. Every nation, every nation, everyone, every tribe and every tongue will give you glory, will give you glory. Every nation, everyone, every tribe and every tongue will praise. Every nation, every nation, everyone. Every tribe and every time will give you glory, will give you glory. Every nation, everyone, every tribe and every tongue will praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Yahweh, Yahweh, you reign. All glory to your name. Praise His holy name. Praise His holy name. There's only one worthy to be praised. There's only one God. There is only one God. There is only one King. There is only one worthy to be praised. There is only one God. There is only one King. And Jesus is your name. There's only, there is only one God, there is only one King, there is only one worthy to be praised. There is only one God, there is only one King, and Jesus is your name. There's only, there is only one God, there is only one King, there is only one worthy to be praised. There is only one God, there is only one King. There is only one God, there is only one King, there is only one worthy to be praised. There is only one God, there is only one King, and Jesus is your name. We give you praise. We give you praise. Yahweh, Yahweh, you reign. Oh, glory to your name. Yahweh, Yahweh, you reign. Yahweh, 
Of our born names, Lord. The name that rescues us, the name that saves us, the name that heals us, the name that set us free, the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for that. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 We love you, Father God. We love you, Father God. We love you, Father.
through your word. Thank you for the fire that cleanses all that draws from us. We live holy lives before you. Thank you, Father. You have called us out of darkness into the marvelous light. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading us and guiding us, for teaching us. your way and have your say in our lives, God. Move in the midst of your people, we ask in Jesus' name. Move, Lord God. Thank you, Father. As we surrender every hindrance, Father, every sin, cast aside. Right now, this very moment, we cast you to the side. And you will speak to every one of us individually and corporately, Lord, as a church, the church of Christ. Speak to our youth, God. Set their hearts on fire. For you, Lord, individual here, for every adult single father, for every married couple here, Lord, set them on fire, Lord, for you, Lord, for your kingdom, for your power and your glory, Lord, have your way, Holy Spirit, have your way, touch us, Lord. Heal us and we'll be healed, Lord. Save us and we'll be saved, Lord God. 
more of you, more of you, more of you. Less of us. More of you, my Father, increasing. Increase, Father, your wisdom, your knowledge, your truth, Lord God. Let it increase within our hearts and within our minds, our souls. Expand within us, Lord. Expand our faith and our thoughts, Lord. mind of Christ. We long to have the mind of Christ. Thank you, Father, for the spirit of the living God that lives within us. Instruct us. Guide us. We long for you, Lord. We long for you. We long for you, Lord God. We long on Facebook, for those on YouTube, Lord, penetrate those waves, Father, minister to them in their homes. Reign and rule in their homes, Lord God, right now. Move in this place, my Father. Let people cry out for your glory. Let them cry out for you, Lord God. Let them cry out for a touch, for a healing. saying yes to you, Lord. We're saying yes to the living spirit of the living God. We're saying yes. We're surrendering our lives right here now, today and forevermore. You belong to us and we belong to you, Lord. You're our father and we are your children, Lord. We say yes. Yes, Lord. Move in our families. Move in our children, Lord God. Move in our husbands and our wives. Move, my Father, in the situations, circumstances.
Just let the Holy Spirit have his way in you right now. Open up your hearts. Open up your minds and your ears. That you would hear what the Spirit of God is saying to you. Let him move freely in you. Let the Spirit of God move freely in you right now. Tell him, have your way. Tell him, have your say, Lord, in my life. Move. I ask you to move in my life. is healing right now. The Spirit of God is healing you right now. Just receive your healing. There's power in believing God. There's a power to receive right now. There's a faith right now in this room to receive. If you would believe, you could receive. Receive the healing of God that's upon you. It could be a soul ex experience. It could be a soulic healing right now that God is healing you soulically in your mind, in your emotions, in your thoughts, in your will. Let him heal your mind. If you begin to think God thoughts, no longer foolish thoughts or foolish of your past, thoughts of your past. New thoughts, the mind of Christ. Let him heal your body right now. Let him heal your knees. There's someone here that just needs healing in their knees. and God could do this right now. God heal you. Say, heal me, Lord, and I'll be healed. I'll just receive it. traditions, our religion and our past, Lord God. Thank you, Father, from our hurts and our pains. Thank you for the wholeness. Thank you that we're made whole by the stripes of Christ. Thank you, Lord, that we're whole, Father, that our spirit man is alive. Our inner man is alive and he's well because of the greater one that lives in us. Thank you for the authority and the power to walk over every serpent, every scorpion, to walk over every lie of the enemy and recognize it when it's alive. 
but we choose to live for you in the truth. In your truth that set us free. And free indeed are we, Lord God. We are free. Free to worship. Free to live for you. Free to honor you. Free to bless you. Free to say the name of Jesus. Free. Free in Jesus' name. Power in the name of Jesus. Yes, there is power. Ask and receive. Ask. Blind Barnabas received his sight because he asked. The woman with the issue of blood, she received it because she heard Jesus was coming. And according to her faith, it was done. The man with the withered hand, he asked, and Jesus healed him. Come, ask. Ask. This is the atmosphere. Miracles happen. I believe in miracles. God is moving in your midst right now. He's in the midst of his people. He walks among you. Thank you. God is giving you confidence. Some of you have said, I've lost my confidence. God is returning that confidence right now. That confidence is coming back to you. The confidence in Christ Jesus. The confidence in a holy God. In a righteous God. Receive it. God is a holy God. He is holy. Santo. Santo eres Dios. Restoration's coming to you. God is restoring your soul, your thoughts, your emotions. God is doing that right now. Receive it. Receive it. The mind of Christ. Mm. Revelation is coming. A rhema revelation is coming to you. He's in the room. Hallelujah. Wow. This order is leaving your life right now. You've been living a life all out of order order is coming back. The order of the kingdom of God is coming back right now. have been broken. The blood of Jesus has cleansed you. You're free to believe. <laughs> You're free to believe. You are free to believe. God Almighty. Yes. Receive it. Be healed right now in Jesus' name.
Wow. Thank you, Lord. As one team, you'll be one. You'll be one in mind and you'll be one in spirit. God's about to take you to a higher level of praise, a higher level of worship. It's going to be in your heart to worship God. It's going to be in your lips. It's going to be in your praise where you win your battles, where you overcome in your praise, in your worship. This is where it all comes in your praise and your worship. As you worship God, as you praise God, the battle is won. It is yours. Raise your hands in victory. For victory belongs to you, says the Lord. Victory is yours in Jesus' name. Raise your hands, Ray, like a champion. Like a champion, baby. Yes. Thank you, Father. Higher, higher and higher, the Lord wants to take us further and further, deeper and deeper. God gave us this land. God gave us this land, every one of us. It was not just given to pastor. It was given to Turning Point Fellowship. Every one of you have the kingdom in you. Every one of you have the strength. You have the authority in the name of Jesus. The authority of God has been granted to you. The Son, the Son, His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. No more heartache. No more heartache. Freedom now. Yes. Ha <laughs> ha. Raise your hands like you receive it. Give them a shout like it's yours. Victory belongs to you. Over your cur over the curses of your family. Those things are broken now. Over whatever held you back, it's been broken. Your doubt, your disbelief has been broken. Sin has been conquered. Sin has been conquered by the blood of Christ. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You can live righteous and you can live in the truth if you would just believe it. Hallelujah. Some of us need some aid. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeshua is his name. Yeshua, Lord God Almighty. He is Lord. Worship the Lord with me. Worship the Lord with me. Praise God with me. He is a holy God. Holy is the Lord. Holy. Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh, our provider, Jehovah Rapha, yes, our healer. He is Jehovah Nisi, he is your peace. Yeshua, Jesus, God with us, God among us, the Lord, the Lord is with you wherever you go. Yes. Yes. Glorify the Lord with me. Come, let us magnify the Lord. Let us magnify the name of Jesus.
Bendito Señor been in an atmosphere like this, you on Facebook, YouTube, and here in this house, all you have to do is believe. The Lord doesn't ask you to perform anything. All you have to do is believe Jesus and the one who sent him to heal and to deliver set the captives free to bring peace to you 
to bring life and life more abundantly. You just have to believe. God will perform his work. For every word that proceeds out of God's mouth does not return void, but accomplishes all that he's purposed to do. What an atmosphere, Father, that you would honor us as we honor you and as we worship you, Lord God. Let this be the beginning of great days and great movements in the midst of your people. Not just here in this church, Father, but across the land, across this world, Lord God, and across America and California. Let this move, Father, begin here in this house. Let it move to our neighbor's house, to our workplaces, Lord, to our families. As we walk in, Father, to the homes, that they would sense and know that the glory of God has just entered in through that vessel. That the praise and the worship of God has just entered in. And the windows of heaven are pouring out blessings. And it's such a blessing that we can't even contain it. A blessing that will be poured upon us and upon our children. That will worship God in the streets. We'll worship God in the grocery market. We'll worship God at the laundry mat. We'll worship God in our workplaces and at home, Lord God. We'll worship you. We'll bless you, Lord. Thank you for the sensitivity. That we're sensitive to your spirit. Thank you, Father. Pray, Father, for your people. I pray that you keep them close to your heart and draw them close to you as you draw close to them, that they would draw close to you, that they would hear your voice, they would hear the cry, Lord God, of the brokenhearted and the lost, and they would go. They would go beyond these four walls, Father, to minister life, love, restoration, Lord God, salvation, and repentance to the lost and to the hurting, to the sinner, to that prodigal son and daughter, that they would come home, Lord, that they would hear the voice of the Holy One calling their name. I pray. And I believe, I believe in you, my Father. And I believe in the one that you sent, Jesus. And I believe in the one that he left, the Holy Spirit. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the peace of God settle on you right now. You're going to be able to sleep well now. God is going to give you rest to your mind, to your soul. Tonight you're going to sleep very well. You can say you've slept in the arms of God. Today's your night. saying sleep but he does because he knows that some of you haven't slept well in a long time and you're about to rest now you're about to rest in God thank you Father as we rest in you here tonight thank you for what you've done 
we're saying thank you right now by faith and what you've done for us tonight. We bless you and we thank you. And all his beautiful people said, amen. Go ahead and have a seat if you can. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. See how sensitive the children are? They're sensitive to the spirit. They know what to do. They know come to the altar. So right now how the atmosphere is just filled this place. It's a beautiful atmosphere. And I thank God for that. And the worship doesn't end because the music ends. Doesn't end because we stop singing. Worship isn't within you. Worship is in your heart. Worship is saying, I love you, Jesus. That's worship. I believe in you, Lord. That's worship. I need more of you, Jesus. That's worship. I need more of you. And every one of us can say that. We're going to go ahead and receive our tithe and our offering, which is part of worship. Which is part of our worship to the Lord. So when you give, give up to the Lord out of a grateful heart, thankful heart. There's a raise your hands if you need an envelope. These handsome married men will get you an envelope. Raise it up high. We should always come to the house of God ready to give. If it's a quarter and that's all you have, you gave a lot. If it's a dollar and that's all you have, you gave a lot. If it's five dollars, a hundred dollars, if you gave whatever the Lord asked you to give. Today I spoke to someone and they told me they've been struggling. They've been struggling in their finances and they said, I never struggled before when I was a tither and giver, but I quit tithing and I quit giving, Pastor Angel. He doesn't come to this church. He called me for counsel. He goes to another church, and that just came out of his mouth. He says, I'm broke. I had to borrow money for the first time in years and years that I never borrowed money before. I had to borrow a little money. He says, but I know what to do. I said, exactly. You're answering your own self. So we give. And we give to the Lord out of a grateful heart. There's a phone number there on the screen. It's 714-477-7436. There it is. 714-477-7736. That's the number there that we should have in our hearts. I don't know why I didn't remember that. <laughs> but I will praise God. We're going to bless the Lord.
Father, we bless you and we thank you for this tithe and offering. We thank you for the windows that are open on our behalf, Lord. Father, we know we're blessed, Father, for you give us health to gain this well, Lord. And we just, Father, give it back to you now. It is rightfully yours. We thank you for the blessings upon our homes that we lack in no good thing. Our mortgage, our rents, our house bills, our gas and our car. Lord God, reflect in Inflation is not affecting us, Lord. We're still living a rich life in Christ Jesus, spirit, soul, and body. Father, we say that we lack in no good thing, and we have more than enough. As we give this to you, Father, we give it from grateful hearts. Out of thankful hearts, we do, Lord. We say thank you for the blessings upon our home and upon our children, our grandchildren, Father. And our husbands and our wives, thank you. As we bless you and we honor you. In Jesus' name. And everyone said. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to go ahead and release our worship team real quick. Like praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead and have a seat. Uh, we're going to get our brother up here real quick. But uh, Brother Ryan uh, has a word for us. From the Lord, amen. Just real quickly, family, it was the night before Father's Day. I don't know the exact date. And I was woken up in the middle of the night. I don't know about you, but sometimes that happens with me from the Father. Because he wants to get something to me. And sometimes we just don't give him enough time during the day, I believe. That's why he wakes us up in the middle of the night. And he showed me this podium. And the microphone that I'm holding right here in my hand was down here. this light was on, just like it is now. The light was on. He says, even though I am the source, 
We're the microphone. Even though I am the source and I am on in your life, that I dwell within you. I dwell within you. This light never goes out with the Lord. That light that's in us never goes out. And he showed me the podium with the light on and the microphone. Even though it's useless. You see, there's a button here. And if we don't push it, the word he used was activate to me. That if we do not activate what we've been called to activate, then he cannot come in and do what he does. So I believe everybody in here has been called to something. And if we do not press, push, and activate, then he cannot do what he desires to do. Whatever that is, family, I know it's for somebody individually. Whatever that is, it's time to push. We have to push this. We have to activate. We have to press in. In Jesus' name, that's what he gave me. Love you, family. Praise the Lord. Amen. Ooh, when you're in the presence of God, you know, uh, do we have that air on? It's, oh, it's on. Wow. Hey. Yeah. That's Holy Ghost right there. Amen. Uh, let, let's all stand to our feet. We're going to go ahead and uh, receive one of our own, uh, Brother Bert Baruch. Come on. Let's give him a good round of applause in Jesus' name. He's ready, baby. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Thank you, I love you, brother. All right, praise God. We, you, we may be seated. Go ahead and be seated. I tell you, when uh, I don't know about you, but uh, maybe some of us come to hear a word. Some of us come to hear a word. Some of us come to be touched by God. I think we should come to have the manifestation of God in our life. Because you know what? Uh, his word says that he's always with us because he said he never leaves us nor forsakes us. So we don't need to come here to hear his word. Okay? I was going to speak on faith and prayer, something that uh, uh, Pastor Eric had given me a couple weeks back. And uh, I think faith and prayer go hand in hand. You know, uh, you guys that uh, know boxing or like boxing, it's like a one-two punch. You know, because, you know, you can't do one without the other. You know, and that's what, uh, that's what I get. And I want to go to Hebrews 11.1. 1. I just want to give a quick explanation of what, uh, what the Bible tells us that, uh, that faith is. And I think that's a very well-known verse, and we all know it. Uh, Hebrews 11.1, 1, and it tells us, Faith is the reality of what is hoped for, the proof of what is not seen. Okay? And in the Webster Dictionary, it tells us, Having complete trust or confidence in something or someone. So it's where do we put our trust in? Where do we put our faith in? Us as Christians, we put it in God. Amen. Okay? Praying is just a form of communication. And that's how we relate to our God, to Jesus. You know what? Because if we, and, and the thing with communication, it's, it's a two-way conversation. Too many of us, we get into prayer and we say, Lord, bless me, bless me, bless my children, bless my, my home, bless this, bless that. But we never wait for the response of what he is trying to tell us, what he's trying to get across from us. You know? And the thing is, as we communicate with God, then our worship starts to grow. Our reading starts to grow because we become more intimate with our Lord Jesus Christ. The way I see it uh, is that faith as a Christian we have to have a confident expectation without the proof of what is taking place. You know? And when we, when we go ahead and we get into prayer, we pray by faith. You know, I pray for my children, my grandchildren, you know. And I don't pray for them to come to church. I pray for them to have 
that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Because even as our pastor said, they can come to church, but if they don't have the relationship, what good does it do them? It doesn't do them any good. You know? uh, so our faith is in God and God alone. Ask you a quick question. Who saw Jesus born? Who's seen his life? Anybody see him die? Anybody see on the cross? Anybody see resurrection? None of us do. But we have faith that that took place because this is his living word. And if we know the word, we know what's in it. That's our belief, our belief in Jesus Christ. Because, you know, nothing else is going to take us through these times, and especially these given times, but having faith in God. Because, you know, times are terrible out there. And just everything that's going on, it's getting, it's getting worse. It's getting uglier. Uh, I tell you, I like, I want to go to John, John 1, and let's just, yes, the gospel, John 1, John 1, 1, this is just one of my favorite verses, as I think it really brings it to, uh, to light or to life on who God is. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You know, and that just brings joy to my heart. But what, and then in 14, verse 14, which is the beautiful part, it says, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We observed his glory, the glory as the one and only Son. You know, and that's what we have now. We see the glory of God through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit that lives within us. You know? And that is just brings joy to my heart because that's what makes us believers in our faith. That Christ came, he was born, he lived a life, he died, he was crucified, and he resurrected. And the resurrection is what gives us our hope in Christ. In Romans 12, 3, I'm talking a bit about faith. Romans 12, 3 tells us that God has given each of us a measure of faith. So it's up to us to walk in it. Now, it doesn't say how much measure of faith. It doesn't say how it is. Maybe pastor has 20 pounds of faith. Maybe I got two feet of faith. Maybe pastor Angel has 20 gallons of faith. It doesn't say but each of us is given a measure of faith. And what we need, we need to do with that faith is we need to exercise it in order for it to grow. Because if we don't exercise our faith, it's going to stay. It's not going to grow. And the Word tells us that if we have faith, what? The size of a mustard seed. We'll tell that mountain to move, and it will move. Now, it's not moving you know, because we tell it, but it's moving because we have faith in Jesus Christ our Lord. Right. And he's the one that moves the mountain for us. You know? So how do we exercise that faith? This is part of exercising faith right here. Our fellowship. Coming to church. Being with fellow brothers and Christians. Through our prayer life. Through our worship. We exercise that faith. Faith is, I, I kind of think of it uh, as muscle. You know, we've all got muscles. You know, like Pastor says, i got a six pack down here somewhere. Right? But what I got to do? I got to get rid of some of this excess that I have. And as we exercise our faith through the trials and tribulations that come, we, our faith starts to grow. Because we don't build it because we already have it. But it will start to grow. You know, now all of a sudden, instead of moving that anthill, I'm moving that mountain. And we know that God reveals himself through his word. Yes, so if we don't know the word and what's in it, then how do we know what to pray for or how to pray for it? You know, you got to know the word. You got to have the word in your heart, you know, not just a mind, in our heart. Amen. And as that word starts to grow within us, then our faith starts to grow. Our prayer life starts to grow. You know, God reveals himself through his word. And through our prayer, as we become more intimate with God, through our prayer life, 
then he becomes more intimate with us. Amen. And then we have an understanding of what it is that his will is for our lives. Because oftentimes we pray. I tell, I tell my kids in class, I prayed for a Porsche a long time. <laughs> I did. And you know what? Never came. I came for a little while, way back in the days. But anyways, I, I prayed for it. But, it, you know, it's not going to happen. Because, you know, that's not part of the will of God in my life. Amen. You know? Amen. But now if I pray for my children that have that relationship with Christ to move in the things of God, that's part of God's will. Because that's what he wants for us. He wants that joy. You know, he wants that peace. The understanding that we have. That's all part of God's will for our life. And we need to understand when we pray, we need to know what the promises of God is. And all his promises are right here, right here in his word. So if we don't know what the promises are, you know, sometimes we get lost in prayer and we're praying for the wrong things. So we need to know that and we need to just move forward. The thing is, when the trials and tribulations come, because we know they're going to come, because it tells us the same thing in John. It says, you know, trials and tribulations will come, but it says, you know, do not fear, because I will overcome the world. So we know they're going to come, but we have faith in Christ that he's going to lift us up above them, and he's going to carry us through them, because it's not a situation that's going to be for eternity. You know, it's something that we're just going through. And we know through our belief in Christ that he's going to get us through it. You know, it's not so much that we believe in ourselves or we believe in fellow man. You know, it's believing in Christ and he's the one that's going to get us through it. You know, it's too often times, first thing we'd run to, we run to family. And some of that family ain't even saved. They're not even Christians. But we seek advice from them. What kind of advice are they going to give us? All they're going to give us is worldly advice, which will do nothing to help us out in our situation. You know? But when we go to Christ, he's the one that's going to carry us through, and he's the one that's going to see it through it. You know? The thing is that we can't be is we can't be a double-minded Christian. You know? Some days I can't believe. Other days I can't believe. You know? I can't believe for the little if I'm not going to believe in the big. You know? I had a situation here a few years back uh, and I mean way back, we were still on Barnwell. And I think it was a Thursday night. It was Bible study. And just throughout the day, I was fighting it. I said, you know, man, I don't want to go. I'm being honest. I don't want to go. Eh? I'm being honest. You know? And then with, 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 with uh, the, the excuse that I got, I had, you know, I don't know, I had maybe a quarter tank, an eighth of a tank of gas in my car. So I set my mind on that. I said, well, you know what? I don't have enough gas. So that settled it. So right, I'm not going to go. Conviction came real quick. And the Lord said, you trust me for all eternity, for salvation, and you can't trust me for a little bit of gas? And I said, I'm going to church. <laughs> I got there late, but I got there, right? I mean, that's the truth. You know, because he tells us, if you can trust me in the little, I'll trust you in the big. And that's where our faith has to come, you know. James 2.14 tells us that faith without works is dead because faith is an action word. That's right. So where are my actions? Where are my works? I think the biggest one, and I'm raising my hand, probably for a lot of us is, do I have faith enough to tithe? Do I have faith enough to try? Tithe. Especially when things are a little bit rough at home. You know, maybe my hours cut back. Maybe I lost my job. But do I continue to tithe? Or I just say, well, you know what? Lord, I ain't got the money. What do we believe in? We have to believe in the word of God. And we have to know that he supplies each and every one of our needs. Amen. You know what? Do we have enough faith to give away my last dollar or a couple of dollars? You know, we see a lot of homeless people out there. You know, I got my last 10. I ain't got no change. Oh, man. You know, normally I carry some change in the, in the ashtray. I don't think a lot of us do. But, you know, all I got is a $10 bill. 
No, I have to have faith to give it away. Give it away. And God will multiply that. God will honor that. That's right. yeah? Because we have to be coherent to the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit is telling us. I remember uh, a few years back, we were in a restaurant, my wife and I, and there a couple came in with uh, three girls, which is kind of what I had. And I'm looking at it, and the Holy Spirit is telling me, he says, go tell that couple that they're blessed. And I was sitting there, man, I don't even know these people. You know, we're here in the middle of a restaurant, and it's full. Do I really want to go say that? But I got to, you know, I, I'm not going to say I got the nerve. The Holy Spirit convicted me. And I got up, and I went over there, and I said, you know what? I said, uh, my, this is my, my wife is sitting right there. You know, I'm not here on my own. I said, but I, said I just want to compare it. Uh, uh, God said that uh, you're a beautiful couple. He said he's got some big plans for you and your family, for your daughters. And the wife started crying. I don't know what their situation was. I don't know what, uh, you know, what was going on. I just followed the unctioning of the Holy Spirit. And walked over there in faith because oftentimes we can get, we can get ridiculed. You know, we kind of get embarrassed. Yeah. We might get rejected. But we know that, you know, we're not being rejected. We're not being ridiculed. Right. You know, it's Christ. Amen. And that's just the faith that tells us, you know. Second Corinthians tells us what? I live by faith and not by sight. So I can't understand. I may not understand what's going on around me. Because I don't, you know, everything is going on around, especially in this day and age, everything is just going haywire, going out of whack and stuff and whatnot, you know. But I have to know who I listen to. And I listen to the Holy Spirit, you know. And I need to just keep going forward, you know. It reminds me a lot of, uh, uh, I think about Noah, you know, building that ark. You know, a lot of you guys are football fans. That ark was over 500 foot long. That's the size of almost two football fields. You know, it's like 84 foot wide, like 95 foot high. That's a big boat, you know. When he got the word and he finally completed it, it was about 120 years. But people guesstimate, guesstimate that it took him 75 years to actually build it. Can you imagine some of the ridicule, comments that not only he heard, but his family, because his family is the only one helping him out, for 75 years, people coming by. And when he told them, they said, what are you building? I'm building an ark because it's going to rain. It never rained before. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so people had to say, Noah, you, you know, you're crazy. What the heck are you talking about? What are you building this big old boat? But through faith, he completed it. Amen. Right? And that type of faith that he had, we need to have now. Amen. Because the way that this world is going, it's getting uglier and uglier. And God has a plan for us. So we need to walk in faith. We need to stay in faith. And we just need to keep moving forward. You know, because you know, he, he didn't care that the people said what they did. And we need to be the same way. Because like I said earlier, they're not ridiculing us. You know, they're not rejecting us. They're rejecting the word. They're rejecting Christ. You know? And we just need to move forward, you know. The thing is, as we pray, we communicate with God, and that's how our personal relationship grows with him. And like I said earlier, that's how we get intimate with him, and it's a two-way conversation. We just can't go and ask, 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 ask. I'm done, Lord. Vamonos. No. We have to let him answer us, and he will answer us. It may be a no, you know. Only he knows what we're ready for, what we're capable of. And we have to accept that. We have to understand he knows what's best for us. In John, in Matthew 6, 6, it tells us what? Enter into the secret place, into your private room. Why? Because the enemy is going to attack you. How many times do we try and get into, pr into prayer? The radio is blasting over here. The kids are running amok over here. And things just going on in the household. And right away, your mind starts to wander. It gets distracted. And that's just the enemy. The thing we need to understand is that prayer is a weapon. It's a powerful weapon. And it's available to all of us. You know what? All we have to do is have faith, 
get into our secret place because the enemy is going to come. The enemy is going to come, and he's going to try and distract you. And that's why he tells us to get into our secret place. You know? my, my best time, I mean, you know, I pray constantly throughout the day because that's what the Word tells me. It tells me to pray without ceasing. You know, obviously I can't be in my, my, my closet 24-7, but throughout the day I give thanks. Amen. And just thank, I get out the shower up, and for whatever reason, I just, just thank you, Lord. Just thank you. you know, thank you that I, took, I was able to take the shower. You know, I tell my kids in class, you know, I tell them, I said, you know, when, especially when we give uh, uh, praise reports and stuff, I said, you know, don't complain that your parents or your mother is telling you to clean your room. Don't complain that you're asking you to make the bed. Don't complain that you have to do dishes. For the young man, I said, don't complain that you have to cut the lawn. Don't complain that you have to help wash the car. I said, because there's a lot of individuals out there that don't have that. I said, be thankful. Thankful that's what we have. I said, when we do our prayer request, I make it very plain to them. Because a lot of them at the age that they're at, I, I teach the 10 to 13-year-olds, uh, 11 to 13-year-olds, and they'll pray, you know what, I want to do good in my baseball game. Uh, I want to get good grades this year. I want to go, I want to pass. I said, well, we'll pray for it. I said, but in school, are you doing your homework? Are you listening to your teacher? Are you turning the assignments in? Huh? In the sports field, are you listening to your coach? Are you doing that little extra batting practice? Are you doing your throwing, your fielding? I said, we'll pray. I said, but God may not answer it if you're not doing your part. And that's the same thing with us. You know? We need to know what we pray for. And we need to know that we go in there, most of all, we go in there with a pure heart. That we've released whatever sin, whatever things that's pressing us. It might be the, the, the day of work. It might be I had a little discussion right now with my wife. I call it discussions. We don't call them disagreements. You know, I had a little discussion. I'm not feeling right. I need to release all that stuff. Because God doesn't honor that. You know? I'm, I'm, I'm cutting it quick because I had a whole lot more. <laughs> but thank God. Anyways, but uh, that's what we need to do, you know. And we know, as I said, prayer is a powerful weapon. And it should be our weapon of choice. Because Satan can't stop it. He said the only thing he can do is try to distract you from it. You know and so we just need to be know and be aware because the Bible tells us that we're not ignorant to the enemy's devices. So we need to know where that distraction is coming from. It ain't coming from nowhere from, from Satan because he doesn't want us to have that relationship That's with right. God. He doesn't want us to grow in the thing of God. And he knows that if we constantly in prayer, if we have faith and we're worshiping, we're fellowshipping, we're going to grow in the things of God. And as we grow in the things of God, we need to realize that it's not for us. We need to give it away. We need to tell people about it. You know, this is what God has done for me. You know, and this is what God can do for you if you submit to what he's asking us to do. I'm going to be a little transparent right here. <laughs> I, I, like to, uh, I like to belch. I like to burp. I'm being honest. And I'm, I'm a belcher, baby. There's no doubt. And at the house, my wife says, man, why do you have to do that? I used to tell my kids, I can burp your name out. <laughs> I'm being real. You know? And my wife says, why do you do that? How come you do that? And I said, you know, and instead of complaining, thank God that my organs, my body is functioning just the way God created it to. Right? <laughs> There are some people that tell me that they can't burp. Praise God, I can. You know? I mean, hey, that's just me, right? That's an amen right there. You know, but uh, prayer and faith, to me, they go hand in hand. Like I said, it's a one-two punch. I mean, you know, think about Joseph's life. That's what, if you guys don't know Joseph's life, read about it. I mean, at the age of 17... You know, his brothers wanted to kill him. They threw him in a pit. He was sold, sold into slavery. He was doing well at Potiphar's house. And 
and then they accuse him of rape. They sent him to prison for a crime that he didn't commit. In prison, <clears throat> I just lost him my word, but uh, he translated a couple of dreams, you know, that uh, people had. And they said, oh, yeah, when we get out, we'll, we'll let, uh, well, the one, because the one was a, <laughs> was, a, was a dream of death. But uh, the other one, and he says, I'll tell the, uh, uh, I'll tell the king or uh, whoever it was. He says, but he didn't do it. So he spent more time in jail for nothing of his doing other than people were jealous of him. You know? And he never lost hope. He never lost faith. And in the end, you see exactly what God did for him. You know? I think of Job, one of the wealthiest persons alive at that time. I mean, he had oxen, he had donkeys, he had mules, he had ten children. And, you know, he was blessed. He was blessed. He was one of the wealthiest men in the East, the Bible tells us. And yet, Satan came and, and God and Satan had a discussion and he lost. He lost his children, lost his wealth, lost his servants, you know, lost everything. And through all that trouble, even his wife, I think it's in 42, 9 and 10, but his wife says, curse your God. You know, curse him. You know, and, and I, I think about the, uh, the sores that he had. Yeah, the boils and stuff. I don't know. My wife likes to look at that pimple popper thing. I, I, I really don't. I just like, oh, man. Because I see some of those things. And, and that's, but that's what comes to my mind is that pimple popper people, you know, just all those boils that he had. But he never gave up on God. That's right. Never gave up his faith. Even when his own wife was against him. I mean, I'm not saying our wives or husbands can sometimes be that way, but sometimes they can be discouraging. Right? But who are we going to believe? Who are we going to believe? we got to believe the Lord. That's right. Because it's God first, then family. You know? And I thank God because my children now, they've come to realize that. My wife has come to realize that. Because, you know, now, you know, once you become a Christian, like Pastor says, sometimes you don't get invited to the barbecues or you get invited on Sunday, which is church. And now, praise God, my children know. They'll say, hey, Pops, we're going to have a, a, a barbecue for so-and-so uh, on Sunday. And I'll look at them. He goes, no, no, no. It's going to be at 3 o'clock after church. But thank you, Jesus. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. And that's just having faith. That they know that. You know, I go to barbecues. I go to things. You know, we have a very large family. And... 20 years ago, I'd still get off for a beer, you know, just because you guys know some of, some of our past. Uh, but now, praise God, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen, you know. And I thank God for that, you know, that I can go and they know, and, you know, and, and they know enough about me that, you know, what, they don't even offer that anymore to me. So I just thank God for that. Because, you know, and that's the same way because we've been faithful. You know, we come to church. They know we come to church. This is our life now, That's right. you know. Uh, faith and prayer is not something that I do here and there. It has to be a lifestyle. Yes. There's no other way if, if we're Christian, you know. Some people think of praying, to me, I think they view it as a, as a spare tire. Right? Every car has one. Or it should have one. You buy a new car, it comes with a spare tire. But sometimes people think of that way as prayer. We know it's there. But we only go for it when the troubles come, when situations happen, and we reach for that spare tire. shouldn't be that way. You know, it shouldn't be that way. Prayers, like I said, is a way of life. It should be something that we do continually. Daniel prayed three, day, three times a day, it says in the Bible, and he would pray to the window facing Jerusalem. He was a governor, and there was four of them. And they couldn't find no fault in them, but they were jealous of them. So what did they do? I'll use the word conniving, you know, but they got together with the king and they said, you know what? Anybody that doesn't pray to you or to our gods and stuff should be killed. And they tricked, exactly, they tricked them. But he signed the decree, he signed it into law because they knew that Daniel would be praying. And even though Daniel knew that the law had come to pass, didn't bother him. 
He continued with his praying. You know? And, and we know, you know, he threw him in the lion's den, but nothing happened because of his faith in God. You know? And another, in Daniel 10, it tells us that he received a vision. And the first thing that he did, he went to prayer. He prayed for 21 days. It says he fasted and prayed for 21 days. How many of us are that persistent that we would pray for 21 days? You know, sometimes we'll pray for something a day or two. It's out the door. That's right. We forget about it, whatever it was. You know, he prayed for 21 straight days. And when he finally got his answer, because an angel came to him and he said, you know what, your prayer was answered the very first day. But I was battling, battling with, you know, what, what we battle with, you know, principalities of darkness. And he finally got through and the answer came to him. But how many of us are that consistent in our prayer life? Yeah. I mean, you know, when we go to bed at night, do we pray that little prayer that we learned as kids? Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Is that our prayer? No. You know? Prayer, it, it tells us that, you know, the prayer, the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth its month. You know, it doesn't mean it has to be a 30-minute a, a prayer, a 40-minute prayer, but it has to be concise, has to be direct, it has to know what we're praying about. You know, I don't just pray for healing. Hey, some guys may not know it. I, you know, I've got a little bit of cancer, and I say a little bit of cancer. But you know, but I, I, I know that I'm being healed. So I just don't pray for healing. I said, Lord, this cancer has to wither and die because you're in control. You are Jehovah Rapha. You are my healer. You bore the stripes of Calvary that I would be healed. This cholesterol, this diabetes can't live in my body because your blood flows through my veins. You know what? It's just not generalities that we pray for. You know what? We have to be effective when we pray and what we pray for. You know what? It, it, and it has to be according to his will. I'll give you one last one, and this is Psalm 66, 18. Because I thought this was a heavy word as I'm studying and I'm reading. And Psalm 66, 18 says, If I had not confessed the sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. I said that earlier. We can't come to the Lord with sin in our heart, with wrongdoings, with something that is not pleasing to God. He's like, like I tell my, my, my class, your prayers are going like this. You know, he may hear it, but he's not going to respond to it. Because we have to come with a pure heart and we have to be sinless. So before we pray, we confess our sin. Lord, whatever it is that I, that I sinned on today, maybe it's a word that I said. Maybe it's a word that I didn't say. Maybe it's something that I did. Maybe it's something that I didn't do. But remove that right now, Father, as I enter in, that I would be pure of spirit, pure of heart, that my prayers would be answered. We have to know that our God is a sovereign God. When we pray, we don't want to reach God's ear. Because how many of us get tickled when we hear something? We want to reach his heart. That's what you want to do. And that's why that prayer has to be effective. Because we want to reach his heart. We just don't want to touch his ears. You know? So as I said, faith and prayer is a lifestyle. It's not just something we do in our spare time or when it's out of necessity. Every day I give thanks to our Lord. Every day. Not just when I feel like it. It's every day because he wakes us up every day. You know? I say this. I don't pray for faith. That's right. I pray because I have faith. That's right. And that's the way it should be. You know? Prayer and faith, like I said, they go hand in hand. If you're a boxer, you know about that one-two punch. You, know, you can't do one without the other. 
And the more we pray, the larger our faith grows. And the larger our faith grows, the more we can do God's will in our lives. You know, because we have to have an understanding of what God wants to do in our lives, not what I want to do. You know, if it up to me, I'd be on that worship team, baby, because I love to sing. I didn't say I could sing. So like when I'm always telling my brother, say, who can drive? I can drive. Don't mean I can see, but I can drive. All right? But that's where I would be because I, I love to worship my God. Yeah? But God has a place for each and every one of us. And we need to find what that will is of God for our lives, not mine. I don't pray and come to God, Lord, bless this. No, Lord, what's your will for me? Bless me in all that you've given me because I give you thanks for everything that you've done, not only for me, but for my family. I tell you, we've got men of faith and prayer in this church, and they're strong, very strong. I'm glad that Pastor Eric Padilla came on board with us because look what he's done in just a couple of years with the Men Arise Ministry. And that took faith, stepping out. Because the way he tells the story, it was just him. And now look what's going on with it. Praise God. Amen. Pastor Angel, he believed for this building in 18 years. Never gave up on it. Never gave up on it. And through his prayer and through his faith, God has answered it. Amen. You know, Amen. And that's what we need to do. So I'll leave you with that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Stick. Did you guys say stick back in your days? When, did you say stick back in your days when you ran track? You know, you're running and they say stick, boom, right? <laughs> Remember those days, Dave? They yell, stick. All right, praise. Hey, Pastor L. How you doing, my brother, man? Praise the Lord. All right on. Good to see you guys. Hey, David, praise God. No. <laughs> hey, Anna, praise the Lord. There you go. You're all serious on me today. <laughs> Father, we love you. We love your word, Lord God. We love your worship and we love your praise. Father, we love to worship you. We love to praise you. Father, we love to hear your word for we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We thank you, Father, for the word that was given today. Ah, the seed of life, we call it, Lord. The seed that has been planted in our hearts, the good ground of our hearts, that it will produce after your own kind. It will produce hope, love, faith, kindness, meekness, gentleness. Father, it will produ uh, produce perseverance and forgiveness, Lord. That it will produce your character in our lives. And this life, Father, that we live today, we live by faith in Christ Jesus. Father, it's not something we do just on a Thursday or a Sunday. For you know our hearts and we live for you every day of our lives. We love the life that you have chosen for us. But we didn't choose you. You chose us. And we thank you for that choice, Lord, that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So we thank you, Father, for my brother Bert as he gave the word and it fell on our hearts on good ground. Father, as it produces in our lives, we thank you for that right now by faith. We're leaving this place better. Better than when we walked in, Father. We're leaving healed. We're healing, leaving delivered, reconciled, Father. We're, we're leaving redeemed, we just thank you, Father, for the healing and the forgiveness of our sins. We thank you for who you are, that you are God, the God of Israel, our God. We bless you. We thank you as we drive home, Father, no accidents, no breakdowns, no flat tires. Father, not even a ticket, just a safe passage to and from. And I pray for my brothers and sisters on YouTube and Facebook, Lord, that they were blessed today through this service. Lord, I ask that you continue to bless them and they would come out, Lord. They would come out of those living rooms, out of those bedrooms, Lord God, and come forth and worship with us, Lord, and encourage us and be a blessing to us 
as we would be a blessing to them. I thank you for this church, Turning Point Fellowship, that you've chosen us to honor you and to worship you, Lord. And we do it with grateful hearts and thankful hearts. And as we drive home, Father, keep us safe. Tomorrow's Friday, and we'll wake up, Father, and we will truly say, thank God it is Friday. So we bless you and thank you in Jesus' name. And all his beautiful people said, amen. amen. Bless the Lord. Thank you for joining us. Be blessed. We'll see you this Sunday at 10 o'clock. All righty. Bye-bye.